everyone and welcome to this video Sound Frontier video. My name is Jay Wakefield. Now, I am not feeling that great. And, um, well, if you've seen Billy Carr's latest video on his um, Packard Bell 1750 CDT, you'll know that uh, Billy, ML3 and I Luke Miller, have found that Fatty Bear is a brilliant way to try and make yourself feel better. And it would be brilliant if I could play Fatty Bear's birthday surprise on this compact LTE here. You know, it is a fantastic system to play it on. So, let's start it up. You can start the video. Took Windows home and try to boot it up. <laughs> okay, now this isn't a good sign. Oh, great. Hold on, I gotta pass through this. That's making uh, Luke's computer 3,000 miles away do crazy stuff. Right. Now, if I try to load up Windows 95 in normal mode, it goes through the motions of loading. But then a file has, um, while initializing device iOS, invalid VXD dynamic link call to device number whatever it is, service. Your Windows configuration is invalid. Please run the Windows setup program again to correct this problem. Right. Okay. Now, if I was to leave the machine, it would switch off. If I was to press any key, it would switch off. Now, those of you who watched my last video will know that Windows 95 was acting kind of recalcitrant on this computer. Those of you who watched the video before my last one, where I installed Windows 95 RTM, you will know that uh, the machine was also being recalcitrant then. If there's one thing I've learned about this machine, it's that it seems to work best as a Windows 3.1 box. So, that, ladies and gentlemen, is exactly what we're going to be doing here. What we're going to do is we're going to turn this machine back to a Windows 3.1 box. Now that means deleting the FAT32 partition off of the C drive, installing MS-DOS 6.22, installing Windows for Workgroups 3.11, all the drivers and all my programs, getting the CD-ROM drive working, and Bob's your aunties, uncles, mothers, dogs, stepsisters, babysitters, solicitors, doctors, godchild. So, get DOS Disk 1, I'll insert it, and now I'll restart the computer. I enjoyed my new video, Jay, I I'm also enjoyed your new one, the, your, the one that's uh, most recent as of this recording. Which is actually uh, two videos ago now. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh! Because I'm I'm actually uh, rendering uh, the the last video that was up on my channel before this one. I'm rendering, um, so the last video is going to be coming sometime in the future. The space time continuum is weird like that. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, a video is a snapshot in time. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm trying to do here is I'm going to try and get DOS the uh, MS-DOS disk one to kind of start without actually going into setup, although I, I think I've, I think that ship sailed. Yep, it has. I'm in setup. How do you do that? Because I've always wondered. I think you're supposed to press shift when it says starting MS-DOS. Very... Oh, okay. So I've always had it go into setup and then I just close out of it. Yeah, which is what I've done now. But you have to press the key at the right time. So what oh, I'm going to okay. do is I'm going to go to, to F-Disk, right? Going to delete partition. I'm going to delete a primary. Ah, no primary partition to delete. Let's have a look at uh, the partition information. Now, what you see is that the FAT32 partition is actually listed as a non DOS partition because DOS 6.22 does not support FAT32. So we're just going to delete non DOS partition. Whoops. 
Let's try that again. Um, I want to delete partition number one. Do I wish to continue? Yes, I do. Excellent. Now the hard disk is blank. I'll escape to get out of that screen and then I'll escape to get out of F disk. And now it will restart the system. Then what's going to happen is MS-DOS setup will restart. It will create a primary partition and then it will restart again and then it will format the partition ready for use. Because DOS setup is nice like that. It will do that sort of thing for you. And it has been doing so since I think, um, was it DOS 4 or DOS 5? I can't even mind. I'm really not that good at this. Yeah. And of course, that every of course everybody who knows that the new, but that MS DOS five is the best way is the best to run with Windows. I can't even mind the rhyme. Uh, six eighty three. Windows six eighty three. Yeah, yeah. It's Windows, that... it's Windows 386, but for um, the dyslexic person in your Brilliant. Excellent. <laughs> right, so DOS setup. We can press enter to start it, and it'll recognize that um, there's a hard disk with um, no partitions. And um, we're going to let MS DOS setup configure the unallocated hard disk space. Which it's done. All right. Okay. So now, now we're once again loading into DOS setup. This is, like I say, this this does take a while. I remember the first time I ever installed MS DOS six point twenty two. It was on a monochrome. It was on my very first laptop, which was a monochrome screen. I don't know what the processor was, but I do know it had four megs of RAM and an eighty one meg hard disk. I'd like to first say it was. First time I ever installed DOS six point two two was. In Virtual PC 2004. Yes, I know, I'm lame. <laughs> well, to be honest, that's, you know, if I'd have not been given the machine, that's how I would have installed it. I love DOS. Um, so, yeah, that's the that's hard disk formatting. Um, so, yes, this is going to take a while. So... Make yourself a cup of tea. And I will be back as soon as the desk has formatted itself. Okay, so the hard drive is finally formatted. Um, so um, the date and time seem to be correct because this system is awesome enough that it still remembers them. Um, I don't know how it happens, but um, I think it's solar paneled. <laughs> I think it, it must be. It's, it's like being sat at my table, you know, in the get sunlight in the living room in the afternoon so I, I should probably put it away because otherwise I'll end up with a very yellow LTE. Yeah, I was about to say that. <laughs> yeah, and I don't want a yellow one. And you don't exactly want a tan laptop. No, exactly. No. It'll look really, really ugly if I'm like, you know, this machine's like giving it blonde. Anyway, um, you know, I'll just kind of take one look at it and go, damn it, Randy! <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness, that was my boiler. This is why I need a new condenser. The really should be on with that. But they're not. I keep forgetting. Anyway, so I need to I need to set my uh, country, which um United Kingdom. As I said in the Toshiba video, if you're watching this in an independent Scotland and you're wanting to install DOS 6.22, you will still need to have um set it to the United Kingdom because DOS 6.22 Microsoft will not update it to acknowledge Scotland as an independent nation which is really quite a shame 
Right, and then we're going to install all the files to C column backslash DOS. And then the machine will away and install. Now, again, you can go off and do other things, but don't stray too far from the laptop because you will need to change desks. There's three desks to the baseline MS-DOS 6.2 to installation, and the machine will warn you with a loud beep as it needs to change desks. So, I will go now and I'll be back once the fast desk change needs to happen. Okay, we're back. And just so that we can uh, have uh, Luke Miller approval, here's the keyboard on this machine. It's, um, it's, it'll be a rubber dome, but um, it's, it's quite soft. But I mean, it has aged, but it still has quite a nice feel. And it, the, the keys are quite stiff. And, you know, they do have, you know, a nice amount of travel for a laptop keyboard. Um, but um, the softness of the key kind of muffles any sound that you get. I mean, you still get a wee bit of sound, but um, not as much as some laptop keyboards. Is it at least tactile? It is quite tactile, yes. I know my the, the, uh, Armada 7770 um, that I used to have, which... Boy, I miss it. Um, it had a really nice keyboard on it. Yeah, the Armada 7750 and 7770 got beautiful keyboards on it. On them. Anyway, so here's me inserting disc 2. And once again, we're copying files. But yeah, I thought I'd stick that bit in there because Luke Miller approval. <laughs> And you know what else is Luke approved on there? The speakers. Yep, they're not actually on the palm rest. Yeah, I really hate. I really hated that design when I started doing that on my I just thought, what a dumb idea! You've got crumbs and stuff in there. The speakers are actually attached either side of the screen, so you can pretend like it's a Packard belt, and they sound amazing. Yeah, and plus when you have them on the palm rest, when you're typing, <clears> it muffles the sound. Exactly, you can just muffle with your hand. Yeah, so you'll, you'll be listening to Hotel California, and it'll be going... Shush! Copyright. <laughs> I was just mumbling it. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? You know what the copyright mafia are like? You know, YouTube's... You know, YouTube will pick up anything, you know? Oh, if they're that bad, I'd be surprised. So it'll just be like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they'll, um, what they'll do is they'll uh, pitch in the head of a baseball bat, throw in the back of a, of a beaten up old Lincoln Town Car, and um, push <laughs> said Lincoln Town Car into the ocean. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and considering I actually live in a seaside town, that's actually, um, <laughs> it could happen quite easily. Yeah, I'm, um, yeah, North Carolina is not landlocked or anything, but I... But where the part of North Carolina I'm in is about 200 miles away from the coast, so but still they they would be determined enough to go that far to get rid of me. You probably <laughs> you probably might have died of thirst by the time you got to the ocean. Yeah, it's probably about a four hour drive. Especially in a Lincoln Town car, it's probably about eight hours because the damn thing keeps breaking down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and even when it does run, you can't even get it above 45. It's like. <coughs> I'm probably going to get a back of letters from the XW Bill going, well, actually, suffice it to say, the Lincoln Town Car was one of the better models of its lineup. <laughs> well, I guess unless you, um... Unless you don't keep it up. I don't know, I'm too tired. <laughs> but, um, UXW Bill's videos are fantastic. Although, UXW Bell doesn't have a town car. What he has instead is a silver Buick. Um, I think it's a Buick Le Sabre, is it? Or is it a Park Avenue? I can't even And Well, he does. I think um, there is a 2002 Park Avenue in the fleet. Oh, that could be... Yeah, I think it's his mom's car. Yeah. Ruby. Hmm. And then there's... Uh, yeah, and then there's, of course, the, the famous Silver Buick. I didn't realise they still had that. Until, you know, it started kind of playing up. 
Do you know that, um, or, you know, my 1995 condo Ford, when it was originally owned by my mom, she, ac she actually did give it a name. She named it Cleopatra. Oh, dear. Because it was so, it was so elegant. Cleopatra. I, she did some brilliant songs back in the late 90s. I, I, yeah, and, um, I liked, she um, her current car, the 2013 Honda Ford, um, Sheba, because it's black, like Sheba the cat on the, on the cat food. Oh, yeah. So it's, <laughs> so basically like these, basically like these legendary queens. Yes, exactly. And, mm. um, the 2000 Civic, um, since it's silver and boring, I just call it Eeyore. And that's some... Eeyore, Eeyore. <laughs> that's on video. Mm. Or Groovy. <laughs> broom, broom, I'm a car. <laughs> As a... <laughs> no, you, you kind of peep the horn and it's like... Boop, boop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me wrong, the 2000 Civic's a wonderful, wonderful little car. It's just, I wish it was a different color. Let's paint it blue! <laughs> yeah. yeah, if it was rally blue and had a great big massive spoiler on the back. Yeah. <laughs> then you'd be like, oh no, you've raced it! I'm like, no I haven't. There's not a grain of rice went into that car. What I have yeah. done is painted it and added a spoiler. I didn't put spoiler rice... Work. Pardon? Spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah, spoiler alert. <laughs> I think the Ford actually has a spoiler on it. It's not a very big one. It's no. Just but it's the right size to make it look classy. It does. I, I like that because I've seen I've seen the, those models of uh, the Accord without. And to be honest, I think it kind of makes it look a wee bit genetic. But, you know, with, with the wee tail spoiler on it, I think it looks... I think it sets it off, and it's it's not like you know a massive shopping trolley handle or something. You know, it's not like it's not like a whale tail spoil. and not like you know you're trying to dress it up, make it look like an escort or Cosworth. Yeah, it's it's just a it's just a nice wee tail wing on the back, and it makes it look it sets it off nicely. Yeah, and it adds class. Hmm, it's like the uh, it's like the wee duck tail spoiler on the old nine Porsche nine eleven RS. I like that as well. It just kind of you know gives it a wee bit of something. Just kind of. Something to that that'll actually kind of break up the monotony of the rear end. It's um, it's pretty good. Yeah. Anyway, um, that's taken us through the MS DOS installation. So it's asking us it's uh, asking us to remove all the floppy disks from the drives. And it's telling us that DOS is set up. So what's going to happen now is the machine is going to start, and we're going to boot for the first time into MS DOS. It's exciting, this. Starting MS-DOS. You know, back before I knew about computers, I thought that all computers came with DOS. Like, you know, it's like if you formatted the hard drive, you would be in DOS. But, yeah. No, it's got Windows on it. No, hang on, no it doesn't, it's just... I'm thinking out loud here. No, if you found a hard drive, obviously there's nothing on it. Anyway, um, what we're going to do now is set up the supplemental utilities. So I need to log to drive A. And the way to set these up is I need to type setup c column backslash dos. So I tell it where I want to install it to. And I want to install all the utilities. And select VGA as my primary video adapter. Or as my only video adapter. Imagine not having a secondary monitor, but you can only afford an EGA adapter. <laughs> So now we're installing supplemental utilities like the uh, Microsoft Windows antivirus and the DOS shell and things like that, you know. Actually, no, I think Windows antivirus, Microsoft antivirus comes with DOS.
So, again, there's going to be a couple more things that I will need to do. Um, you know, before I can actually get this system fully running, there's some drivers that I'm going to need to install. And those drivers actually pertain to the PC card slots on the machine. So, with that said... I will install those drivers as soon as I've finished installing the uh, DOS utilities. Right. Supplemental utilities are installed. Must reboot. I'm a little fast card, short and square. Here is my data. Here are my socket thing that I actually interface with the. You know what? Never mind. I'm going home. Do you know what? I think we should do a virus scan. Let's do detect and clean. Oh good, there's no viruses. Oh, 10 out of 10 for readability. White text on a grey background. Well done, Microsoft. I know, it's just like on a, on a laptop screen, it's just a dialogue, an empty dialogue box. Right, now that I know that there's no viruses on the system, well, I'm just going to guess there isn't. I am going to check which uh, disks. Alright, that's... Uh, that's not the right one, is it? No. It's the uh, PC speaker driver. Right, okay, so that's the disk for the PC card CD-ROM. But before I install the PC card CD-ROM drivers, I want to install the PC card socket services drivers, because that will help the uh, PC card CD-ROM drive to actually work. So, I'm going to go into Cardsoft setup here. process of elimination. Right, so this is a first time install. Um, I'm going to do a custom. There's two slots in this system. I want to install the utilities to drive C. So what's going to happen is it's going to detect the PC card slots on the system and it's detected them. It's a Ceres Logic PC card controller. Um, I don't want any of the um, flash file system stuff because that just kind of messes everything up and uses up all my memory. So I'll just have the card services, card services allocation utility, Ceres socket services, and... Oh dear. Um, and all these. PCMCIA card library, card information, flash file system... Formatting utility. No, I don't need that either. Flip. So now we're just away installing the PC card drivers. That's um, when you do this, make sure that everything is unplugged from your system. Well, the PC card slots in your system. Otherwise, you might find that um, you get some wee problem arenos. Um, yeah. Oh yes. May Cardsoft 3.1 install utility create modify your config.sys file. Um, a backup copy of the file will be made. Please note, choosing yes will cause Cardsoft 3.1 install utility to modify the config.sys file um, on your bootable hard drive. If you do not wish to have this file changed, choose no and Cardsoft 3.1 install utility will create a 
sample config.sys in the slash card soft subdirectory, and this is what I like. It is recommended to choose yes. Oh, yes. So that's where that came from. That is exactly where that came from. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I thought. Yeah, yeah, choose yes and all your problems will be solved. Yes, Scottish electorate. Yeah. Um. Uh, but don't worry, Jay. I know um, eventually y'all will get independence. Oh, yeah. Have you heard the latest? The UK government on any kind of big infrastru infrastructure project that the uh, government actually um, funds, they're going to be slapping signs on saying funded by the UK government. And oh, look, I love their pride. And their, um, but the, no, 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 even better, let's do mm. this sarcastically. Um, you you got to admire their modesty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and there's going to be a Union Jack. I mean, this this is just this is just a classic case of imperialism butthurt. Yeah. You know, know your place. And, and we knew that, that, you know, I knew that this sort of stuff would happen. How did I know this sort of stuff would happen? Because the same thing happened in 1979 when Scotland... Rejected, um, oh, jinx, <laughs> my memory, oh, jinx, what's that word I'm looking for? Devolution, that's the one. Um, but, you know, we, we ended up with a devolved parliament anyway in 1997, and, you know, Scotland's came on leaps and bounds, you know, and the, the UK government do not like how, you know, Scotland has become so progressive and, you know, our services are, yeah, they are, they're literally very scared. You know, and um, them putting Union Jacks on things, this is really highly offensive. Anyway, we're going to choose yes. All that for a PC card. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, about to modify your config.sys file, your current config.sys file will be copied to config.001. Yep. Modifying the file, please wait. Hard, hard disk clattering. Uh... The card I'll soft. Put a CF card there eventually. Pardon? I want to stick a CF card there eventually. Yeah, eventually I might. Yeah. Um, it's going to. Um... It's about as classic as compact is. Oh yeah. All right. So now. Card soft allocation utility has uh, scanned the PC cards and made modifications. Right. PC cards are installed. Okay, so now we're going to install the PC card CD ROM driver. So, what I'm actually going to do is I will actually need this plugged in so that it can configure it. So, that's, um, that is the next thing. Plug this in. And now the uh, computer's made a noise to acknowledge that something's been plugged into one of the PC card slots. Type install a log to drive A. And just kind of follow the uh, destructions on screen. Excellent. So everything has uh, been configured. So once again, I'll need to restart the computer. And there's a couple of things I am actually going to need to do. And before I can actually install, well, before I can get things started, I will need to copy the Compact LTE drivers over. And I. Pardon? Fry up an omelette? Fry up an omelette? Yeah, maybe. I don't have any eggs. How am I supposed to fry an omelette without eggs? Uh, probably gonna... Oh, right, I'm hoping this CD... I copied all of my Windows 3.1 installation files to, you know, some CDs. Um, so I'm not having to do disk swapping. Right, what I'm also going to do is copy the files over to the hard disk. So I need to create a folder. When DRVS, that's...
Now I've put the disc in the drive, I'll just kind of see if this has got Windows 3.11 on it. And it does. So what I'm going to do is I'm in the WinDRVS folder. So I'm going to X copy. Slash E, X copy everything in the Windows 3.11 directory. Sometimes that can happen, just, just go with it, just keep retrying and then. Okay. There we go. That CD ROM drive almost like sounds like it's saying you bed, 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 bed. That's a cultism. It's the cult times Yeah, you bed, 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 you bed, 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 bed. another cup of tea at some point. Probably could have made one. Probably could have made one while these files are copying, but never mind. I'm going to export stuff from the YouTube. Oh wait, no, you need to export stuff to the YouTube. Apparently your modern office has always been there. Now it's just connected to the cloud. The cloud is just a stupid buzzword for lots of servers. <laughs> yeah, literally. It's I can't believe, you know, in the olden days we used to call it a shared network resource. Then we called it network attached storage, which made sense. Now we call it a cloud drive. When really it's just... It's just like storage and servers. Yeah, and Western Digital. Western Digital. I think the difference with the cloud is that the scalability is just turned up to eleven. Yeah, I mean it's like it's like people get confused as to what the cloud is because I mean yeah, it's these bad word, bad words, buzzwords are kind of confusing. See, I mean the cloud. Yeah, have a nice cold bud. Yeah, bud light. <laughs> oh great! So you're gonna give me some water with some alcohol in it. Much. <laughs> hey, would you like some American piss water? Sure. <laughs> Try and sell American beer to a Scotsman? That's just ridiculous. That's an insult. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder your bartenders are like domestic beer only because then it's like they'll do it, they'll do offers, but it'll be domestic beer only. So it'll be like, oh, go in there for some offers. Oh, well, I'm here now, so I may as well just kind of have my usual foreign muck. <laughs> Actually, our domestic beer is pretty good, you know. Bellhaven Ale, absolutely fantastic. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yummers! Pardon? I know, I know a lot of people who like Bellhaven. Alright. Always drink responsibly, though. I mean, don't, don't, be a, don't be a derp when you're drinking. Do you know, I am going to say this, and it is going to get me shoosted, but I am really glad that Scotland have tightened up on drunk driving laws. You can't even have a beer now. That's, I mean, that's fine by me. That's I don't. a good thing, honestly, because people are stupid on the road half the time. Yeah, I've been, I've been in cars with people who have been drinking, and honestly... They go completely off the scale, off the end of the scale of the cockometer when they've had a few. You know, they're driving like they're invincible. Now I'm sure, it's I'm sure you've got your reasons, like you know. But seriously, drinking and driving is just not on. And you know, if I was in charge, and you know, I am very liberal, but. This is a very authoritarian thing I would do. I would actually stop anyone convicted of drunk driving from ever actually being able to drive again. Mm. Uh, I would do that after, like, several offences. 
Like after they had like I don't know, 3D lives, you're done. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, it kills. It does. Like if, if it leads to something like that, I would revoke a driver's license. Hmm. Um, right, so let's, let's have a look, um, so what I'm going to do is once again, X copy the when 311 star dot star slash E, but this time it's not going to be copying the Windows installation files. It's going to be copying drivers. And it's always a good idea to have the drivers on the hard disk with compact, um, older compact installers because the uh, CPQ inst files installers, they don't generally like to work when you're uh, running them from a read-only uh, source. <clears throat> so I'm actually copying these files to the hard disk. And what I'm going to do is atrib dash r dash a dash s dash s dash h star dot star and then slash s to do all the subdirectories. So now everything is not read only. Um, it's not archived read only. So uh, I forget what s stands for, but um, or hidden. Um, System file, right, good. Now, we can actually go ahead and install Windows for workgroups. I'm gonna take the CD-ROM out of the drive so it doesn't read in those files and try to add them to applications. So I want to do a custom install, C colon backslash Windows. We're gonna keep, um, the video driver is VGA for the time being. And um, we're going to change the keyboard layout to British and the language to English International. Once again, you know, we don't have our independence just yet, but even when we get it, Windows 3.1 will still think that the UK is a thing. How very, very wrong it is. Except I'm a horrible cyber knot. Okay, <clears throat> so now we're in the GUI portion of setup. If this were to freeze up while searching for a network card, I would switch the machine off, switch it on again, and restart setup, and it would skip the part where it searches for a network interface card. So I don't want to install printers, but I do want to set up applications already on the hard disk. Now, if you're installing Windows for Workgroups 3.11 from floppy disks, you would have to stay here and disk swap. But as I'm installing from the hard drive, I could go ahead now and do whatever it is that I ever wanted to do. So I think I'm going to go and put the kettle on. <laughs> Right. New from Humongous Entertainment, Fatty Bear goes to jail. <laughs> yeah, I was just discussing this with Billy and Luke while we were off the air, and I was just... I don't know why I came up with that, but I've realised that some of the music in Fatty Bear could be good escaping from jail music. So we're uh, setting up applications here, and... Um, what I'm going to do is put Microsoft QBasic and MS-DOS Editor. Maybe, uh, yeah, do I put Smart Monitor? Um, yeah, maybe. Uh, want to skip the tutorial? Windows 3.1 does actually have its own tutorial on using the mouse. I've used that before, it's pretty interesting. Hmm. Maybe that's why Packard Bell didn't originally um, ship one of their own. But then, you know, with Navigator 3.5 and the advent of MPEG video cards and what have you. Yeah. I mean, machines 
you know, back then, I'd, you know, I think, you know, by 1995, they were all pretty much fully bona fide multimedia machines. So they could do yeah, that. Except for laptops, of course. Well, yeah, but Packard Bell didn't make laptops in 95, unfortunately. It was a shame, that. It would have been, it would have been cool, though. Mm. Could you imagine? <laughs> Aye. Now, you remember me talking about Microsoft Antivirus and what have you? Well, there are Windows versions of Microsoft Antivirus and Delete and Backup that actually come with MS-DOS 6.22. Now, I could have used the application setup to, you know, make shortcuts to these in the program manager, but I find a much more elegant way is to cd into the DOS directory and then type setup slash e and this will install the optional Windows programs on my computer so it's asking me where they are located c colon back slash DOS where my Windows install is located c colon back slash Windows and there you have it it's um, configured the programs so let's have a look at what it's actually done and this will also be the first time in Microsoft Windows. Now you see you've got a program group called Microsoft Tools which has antivirus, backup and undelete. So um, <laughs> once again I reckon I could uh, scan my system for viruses. Oh! Config. It's telling me that config.sys has been changed. So, I'm going to tell it to update. So, this will have actually... See, that the fact that it detected config.sys has changed, it's kind of flagged that as potentially harmful behaviour. Not the fact that I'm just kind of installing all my programs. But um, hopefully this will protect me from MS Blast. The love bug. The love bug of 2000. I remember there was a lot of people at school who blamed me for that. <laughs> Thankfully I never had to worry about the love bug because even viruses didn't want to have a crush on me. Who, who, who's got a crush on you? All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to dive into the um, drivers. First, we're going to install the Cirrus Logic video drivers for the CLGD7543. So this is a very similar... This is a very similar card to what was um, installed in a lot of Packard Bells from the late 1995, early 1996 era of machines. Billy knows all about them because he's... Oh, <laughs> Billy's a Packard Bell. Um, he, he is... Um, he is our resource for everything Packard Bell from 1994 through 97. Yep. Great machines. Along with our French friend and colleague. Who can get you a motherboard drawing of a Packard Bell just by kind of looking at a picture of it. Yeah. <laughs> right, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to copy the shortcuts just into the main group. Because I'm not needing any extraneous groups here. Because as Billy said in his video, you know, if you have too many groups in Program Manager it will often start giving you into trouble. Yep. So now that I've set the color depth to high color and the um, resolution to the machine's native 800 by 600, this is what we've got. And I must say, it looks rather nice. So, now let's install the sound drivers. And... 
for goodness sakes, let me install my mouse pointer driver first though, because I need it, because I can hardly see the mouse pointer. And it's not on a CD, look. Um, mm, mouse. CPQ. So it's going to restart the computer once and then it's going to restart it again. And <clears throat> this mouse driver installs both DOS and Windows versions of itself. Unlike the sound driver. I will be creating boot menus for this machine as well. Always a, always a unique thing to have on any DOS system. Oh yeah. Now I'm going to be installing the sound drivers, but there is a slight issue. It doesn't like where I've put them, so it's constantly going to be searching for files in a place where there's no files at all. So, I'll show you how to get around that as well, because really the sound drivers want to be on a two disc set. But I've insisted that the installer file for the sound drivers be on the hard disc. So, I'm going to go into disc one. See, now it's saying that it can't find a file. And that's because it's looking in a directory where the files aren't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the files are just in disk in this directory here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to control C so that when it kind of says again that it can't find a file I can just paste in the correct directory. Now it is going to do the same for disk 2. So I'll just have to um, change it. So here we go. Now it's looking in ESS underscore 2, which would be disk 2. So I'll just paste in what I have. There we go. But change that to disk 2. Copy that to the clipboard so that um, once again, when it tells me it can't find a file, I can tell it to look in the proper location. Sorry, I know that is very convoluted. I will need to install the audio rack from another CD as well. So and I didn't get the audio rack application with this set of drivers, but um, installing it from another um, driver set will work absolutely fine. Because I do it. Excellent. And now that's the sound driver installed. So now the system has rebooted. Well, Windows. And we have sound. Some pretty sound advice there, Jay. Yep. <laughs> Carlos. Yeah. So I'll tell you, what I think I will do is I'll just kind of install these drivers. And then I will end the video there. Because I think you can only imagine what an application install looks like. And, to be honest, I've made these two suffer enough. <laughs> video Sans Frontier tonight, you know, and, and they don't need to suffer anymore. So, um, that, that, that sounds like a threat, Jay. Sorry, I didn't mean it to. Mm. I don't want to be joining Fatty Bear in jail. Mm. We decided that he got so sick of Gretchen telling him that um, he had, she had a lot of work to do. And, you know, he took matters into his own hands, and, and it, it didn't end well. Yeah, it's, uh, you can see why, um, that game never came to be, and possibly why there weren't any more Fatty Bear Adventure games. Aye. Anyway, all the drivers have been installed, pretty much. Um, you know, all the ones that I need for just now. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go into the, uh, mouse program. 
and if I go to cursors, invert, large, I now have a large black mouse pointer and that is just fantastic. So there you have it. I have successfully installed Microsoft Windows for Workgroups 3.11. I think before we end the video, I think we need to um, pull out a multimedia CD-ROM. What do you guys say? Just, just kind of have a look at something, something good. That sounds good to me. Sounds pretty good to me. Just, you know, let's let's kind of test out this machine. I was thinking, let's go into Encarta 96 and do what we did last night when we installed Windows 95 on this. We'll go into the Microsoft X position. Alrighty. I'm guessing it'll be a slightly different X position, but I'm not entirely sure. I mean, I know it's the same music. I mean, I do remember talking about it, actually, in last night's video, how I used to enjoy going on Microsoft X position on... Um, the CD-ROM in uh, my teacher, Mr. Green's room, because um, he had um, he had a machine that was fully set up with Microsoft Encarta Encyclopedia 96. Mm. And then when I was on Encarta, because, like I said in Billy, Billy's video, I wanted to be a surgeon, I was always, I remember, used to go to um, the drop-down menu, um, Life Sciences Medicine. <laughs> <laughs> I used to love doing that and just you know finding out all sorts of things and it's just brilliant, you know? You know, when we had computers we actually used them to learn and expand our minds. So uh what do you reckon the kids use the computers for these days? Yeah. Uh probably to uh, watch stupid videos with cats. Yeah. That's accurate. <laughs> I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll see if we can find any cat videos in Encarta 96. <laughs> Free internet cat videos, oh boy. <laughs> Vintage, yeah, video for Windows format, 160 by 120 or something. Yeah, I has cheeseburger. Um, yeah, back in 1996 we had real cheeseburgers. Sorry to disappoint anyone who thinks different. Oh, my lawn. <laughs> I'm nowhere near your lawn. <laughs> right, I'm going to need to find an Encarta disc. Yeah, you may Be right back. All, you may think we're all um, a bunch of old codgers just sitting around here talking about how, how wonderful the 90s were, but um, we're, we're not bitter. We're just interested in a hobby. Hmm. You know, and a lot of these old DOS games, they're making a resurgence. Not that Encarta 96 is a DOS game. But it is on a CD-ROM, which I have here. So what we're going to do, we're going to put that CD-ROM into the PC card CD-ROM drive. We need to install it, so go file, run, d colon backslash setup, dot exe. Now in Carta, in Carta 96 is quite an interesting program because it, has both Windows 95 and Windows 3.1 installers. This was the first version of Encarta to be written with Windows 95 in mind. Even though Encarta 95 works absolutely fine on Windows 95, Encarta 96 does actually support some cool, neat things like auto run and, you know, basic stuff like that. So yeah. I'm going to go for the faster execution here. And now it's installing multimedia files. And I've not had a play on this for a while. I remember I used to feature Encarta 96 a lot in my older videos. I know, I remember that. Back in the Blue Planet 64 days. Yep. <sighs> I don't think Encarta 97 worked on Windows 3.1. Yeah, 
But that would be cool to find out if it did or not. Oh yeah, <laughs> this brings back memories, that program group. I remember I got confused because Encarta 95 was under the Microsoft Multimedia Group, whereas Encarta 96 wasn't, it was under Microsoft Reference. And I was like, oh, where do I get it? Where is it? Is it Microsoft? Because on, on Mr. Green's old computer it was, it was Microsoft Multi, there was a Microsoft Multimedia Group as well. <laughs> right, okay. So, let's go into Encarta first, because we're going to look for some silly cat videos. Let's just kind of see if we could have looked at stupid cats. I loved how in Carter 95, the last thing you heard in the startup sound was, Good morning. <laughs> okay, so let's, uh, we're going to the, uh, how do you get to the multimedia? Look and listen. Right, okay. So I'm going to type cat. Okay. Cat cleaning itself. Yeah. Image missing. That's not good. That's definitely not good. <laughs> Let's try ejecting and reinserting the CD-ROM there. <coughs> image missing, I'll give you image missing. Okay, maybe it's not going to work. So we can't seem to find any silly cat videos. Never mind. Mm. Yeah, they weren't invented until the late 2000s, I would think. That's quite strange because I'm sure we had a cat in 1990. I'm sure we got um, our cat Whisper in 1994. Yeah, we had a cat in the 90s. So course it never really did anything funny except um, bring um, dead animals to our um, back porch but <laughs> Billy it's a yeah it's a cat okay uh, missing part of the file understood when I was at school what the exposition was for. I was just annoyed that you had little to no interactivity in all the things that you went into. <laughs> Didn't realise it was just basically a catalogue. So we've got all sorts of things like Bookshelf 95, Microsoft Automap Streets, Cinemania 96, Automap Road Atlas, Encarta World Atlas, Explorapedia, Magic School Bus explores the solar system. Let's have a look at that. Yep. <clears throat> this isn't the planetarium. This isn't the planetarium. I remember that, actually. So, um... So this is basically just you know, a wee textual catalogue. It's not as good as Windows 95's Microsoft Exposition. That has videos. Let's... Microsoft Wine Guide. Oh, no. <laughs> you heard the music. 
Oh, I heard some fizzy wine there. Yeah, um, I want to know all about Lambrosco. <laughs> um, I had uh, a bottle of, couple of bottles of Lamborghini in at Christmas. Um, and then you've got Microsoft Oceans. Yeah, I hear that sound all the time, actually. Seriously, you look at some of my early videos on Frontier videos, like the original Toshiba uh, T2130 CS video, when I thought it was a CS. It's mm. uh, you, basically me chatting among a backdrop of seagulls. I know. <laughs> yeah. I quite like the sound of seagulls. I know it's odd, but, you know, a lot of people, you know, mm. it's quite funny you know, a lot of people's memory of Aberdeen is, and them bloody seagulls won't shut up. <laughs> I'm going to try and cart it once again. Imagine a store. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't seem to want to play ball, doesn't this? Oh, well. We've had a look at a multimedia product, so that's Windows nearly installed, just about. Well, if, in fact it is, I just need to install all my applications. So, for now I'm going to wrap this video up, but before I do, um, I want to open the floor to you guys. Any, uh, any comments? Me? Uh... Well, again, I'm really jealous of that laptop, but it's, it's a great Windows 3.1 machine, it seems. Oh, yeah. Luke, anything that you'd like to add? Oh, not really. It's a compact LTE 5280, that's all that really needs said. Yeah, it does. In future, I should, you know, if I'm doing a video of this machine, I should be like, hey, everyone, and then just kind of film the laptop. Yeah. And that's all I really need to do. Yeah. Anyway, thank you everyone for watching and thanks Billy and Luke for um, joining me for this uh, video, Some Frontier video. If you like what you see, please feel free to subscribe to my channel and like the page on Facebook. There's also my website, which is uh, probably worth taking a look at. The URLs will follow. But in the meantime, thank you for watching my video and please join me for my next one. Goodbye. Really